today on Excellent Leadership with Sam Adeyemi. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, There is no temptation that has come to you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to bear. He will, with the temptation, also make a way of escape. In other words, storms are custom made. Yours is different from mine. But God will never allow you to experience a storm that is too much for you. He said, hmm, you've been designed, wired. The thing that will overcome the storm is inside you already. Listen, the best of a human being does not come out until you're in trouble. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 29 to 31. It's on the screen. Let's go. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. We we'll title our discussion today, Eagles and Winds. Eagles and Winds. We have emphasized the fact that eagles prefer to soar than to flap their wings. We said, likewise, the Christian life is designed to be run on the platform of grace. But the last time, we said that we should try not to celebrate input more than we celebrate output. In other words, sometimes we celebrate our efforts, we don't focus on the results. So we derive fulfillment from making a lot of effort. But sometimes the, the, those efforts don't necessarily bring results. And, and that doesn't make us strategic because the eagle is strategic. It has strategic vision, and it does not waste its energy. It waits carefully for a wind strong enough to come by, and then it uses the wind to rise. So it soars more than it flaps. However, let's approach it from the other angle today. <clears throat> when the wind comes, before the eagle gets to the height where it will soar, it has to flap. Am I right? It, is, it has to jump off from the branch of the tree. It has to spread its wings, and it has to do a little bit of work. Good. So this, this is encouragement for the Christian who loves to receive visions, receive dreams, receive prophetic blessing, you know, receive prophecies, but who does nothing? I came to encourage you to please not waste God's winds. <laughs> like we learned about the eagle, it's not all the time that the wind is there. We said one of its qualities is its patience, that sometimes it waits for hours before it will get the right wind. Sometimes it waits for days. So we... We, we realize also that the eagle is very sensitive to storms. It has the capacity to sense a storm long before anybody knows there's going to be a storm. When the storm is coming a long way off, the eagle picks it. We need to maintain our sensitivity. Okay? We maintain our sensitivity through fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We fellowship with the Holy Spirit through prayer, through fasting, and through meditation in God's word. And of course, coming into the company of believers, where we're inspired when we worship and praise God, and where God's word is being taught. We need to maintain our sensitivity. But when the wind comes, we need to learn to jump in, dive in, to take action. This is very important. James chapter 1, verse 22, James the Apostle said, Be doers of the word and not hearers only. He said, deceiving yourselves. 
So it is deception. In fact, self-deception. For you to know what you're supposed to do, for God to give you a vision, give you a dream, give you an instruction, and for you to do nothing about it. I say that the gap between what you know and what you do is the measure of your self-deception. Your success will remain in potential form. Your promotion, your breakthrough will remain in potential form. When this church was started, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, imagine a car that is suspended in the air. The ignition is on. The gear is engaged. He said the accelerator is down. So the tires are spinning fast. He said, but the car is going nowhere because the tires are not touching the ground. He said that is a description of the spiritual lives of many Christians. He said they have a lot going for them in the realm of the spirit. They pray, they fast, they confess there's a lot going for them in the realm of the spirit. He said, but physically they are not effective. He said, because their rubber is not touching the road. They are too theoretical in their approach to their Christianity. So my passion is for application. I don't want the faith that will not impart on my life of what uses it preaching a message on Sunday that people will forget on Monday morning simply because it does not connect with their lives. Okay? So, when the wind comes, the eagle still has to do its own part. It needs to jump into the wind. It needs to take some action. I want to encourage us to combine strategic vision with strategic action. The eagle, yes, has strategic vision, but it also must take strategic action to see any results. I was watching some videos um, some days ago, and it was the behavior of an eagle when a storm comes. While other birds dive for cover, the eagle dives into the storm and literally just plays, <laughs> enjoys the storm. So I was watching somebody you know, was recording an eagle, you know, that was just, I mean, it was just soaring like that in the storm. That's what it should be like for a Christian. You don't run away from challenges. <laughs> My pastor said once, just because we taught Christians to believe and to confess, some people, that's what they sat down with. Believing and confessing. I believe it. I confess it. I receive it. But they don't do anything. They won't start a business. They won't apply for a job. They won't go where it really matters. They won't sell anything. So he said, so, some of our brethren have confessed and confessed, and now they have become confused. <laughs> <laughs> don't waste the wind that God sends you. Don't waste your season. Don't waste your opportunity. Put in the required effort to maximize your opportunities. You see, we, we, we caught some winds in this church before. The year 2000, August, uh, Pastor Nika and I were in Dubai on vacation. And I was asking the Holy Spirit some questions. I said, we're coming to the end of the fifth year of our church. What do you have for us for the sixth year? And I began to study in the Bible everywhere that sixth year occurs. And then I think it was Leviticus 25, and then God was talking to Israel. So I was reading it, and the scriptures were jumping out at me. You know, I need the Spirit of God was speaking to me. The seventh year will be your year of rest. You will not plant anything. You will not reap anything. I said, Wow. The year of rest. Thank you, Lord. I said, but it's the sixth year I'm asking about. You're talking about the seventh. <laughs> and then right there in the passage, it says, well, um, just in case you're wondering what you will eat during the uh, seventh year, he said, 
during the sixth year, I will give you the harvest of three years. I said, Holy Spirit, what does that mean for us? He said, I'm going to give you acceleration. I said, what it would take three years to accomplish, I will accomplish it in the next one year. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What do we do? He said, as soon as we get back home, the first pastor's meeting, fix a date for breaking into two services. We were running only one service then and trusting God for more people to come to church. I was expecting the church to fill up for every seat to be taken, for every space to be taken, maybe to even have a few people standing, then we could break the services. We were not there yet. You know, even when the church seemed full, it was just simply because the average person was sitting in business class or first class. What I mean is everybody had a lot of space. <laughs> we spread the chairs out. <laughs> so the church was in full yet. But the spirit said, start two services. So we got back September, the first meeting, which was a date, October 15th. Year 2000. So we started. And then it was like, <laughs> what happened? Because between two Sundays, I was seeing the figures jump every Sunday. Between two Sundays, <laughs> I remember the particular week, between two Sundays, the figures jumped by 300 people. And we had no special program. So I was saying, where did they come from? Where did they come from? <laughs> wow, what's, what's going on? In six weeks, both services were packed out. Then we started the third service, and then we started the fourth one. So we moved from running one service to running four services in just 10 months. It was a win. <laughs> okay? The Spirit of God sent us a win. And we caught on it through obedience. We caught on it through action. Okay? Not waiting for perfect conditions. You wait for perfect conditions, you'll never get anything done. According to Ecclesiastes 11, verse 3 or verse 4. So, my encouragement this morning is that we should not waste those opportunities that God is sending to us. When God does his part, he expects us to do our part. And our part is action. Amen. It's not a strange thing. Thing for you to invest a lot of energy when you are just starting off a venture. It's not a strange thing for you to invest a lot of energy at the takeoff point. It takes a lot of effort, takes a lot of hard work. That's normal. So, some time ago, I was on this flight from Abuja. And sitting right next to me was our own dear Teju baby face. So as the plane was taxiing on the tarmac to take off, Teju, Teju said, this is the part of flying that I don't like. <clears throat> I said, eh, the takeoff. He said, yes, I don't like it. I said, this is the part of flying that I enjoy best. <laughs> he said, you're a very weird person, sir. I said, what, what are you afraid of? He said, you were the one that taught us that some laws are superior to others. And that when the superior law kicks in, it suspends the lower one partially or fully. So you said that when a plane takes off, it's the laws of aerodynamic, you know, suspending gravity partially. That's why the plane is able to take off. So obviously, when the plane is taking off, aerodynamics is struggling with gravity. <laughs> so he said, my prayer at that point is that aerodynamics must not fail. <laughs> that's what I'm concerned about. <laughs> okay, that sounds nice. <laughs> I said, well, interestingly, why I enjoy it is the amount of power that the airplane puts out to take off. Taking off from zero to the speed at which it takes off, it's a lot of power. You can feel it. <laughs> I can feel, that's why they, they shut down the light, shut down everything, so the power can be concentrated. It runs to a particular speed and then takes off. Climbing up requires power, sir. You can feel it until it gets to cruising level. 
So it, 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 there is nothing extraordinary happening to you if you have to spend all your money, if you have to spend all your time, if you have to do all day and work all night, if you have, there's nothing strange about that. To overcome impetus, the power that keeps you at a particular position, you need more energy than it takes to maintain momentum. If you've ridden a bicycle before, you understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> Put in the required effort, the required energy, okay? Don't waste grace. First Corinthians 15 verse 10, Paul the Apostle said, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. Grace can be wasted. He says, But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was given to me. So Paul the apostle that was given unusual grace matched it with unusual labor to maximize the grace. So today when Pastor Nike does Real Woman Seminar Lagos, Real Woman Seminar Atlanta, it sounds really nice. But the takeoff it was not like that. <laughs> it, was, it was, hey, we're not sure how it will go, but she decided she was going to do it and <laughs> rented uh, some small space at a restaurant on Allen Avenue in Keja here in Lagos that could take 70 people. And some people don't realize the reason why they overwhelm themselves is because they're comparing themselves with people that have been there for a long time. The fact that you are reading my book now and reading, this, reading the stories there does not mean that the things I wrote there happened now. You need to track the timing very well. Okay? So you don't frustrate yourself. <laughs> Everybody's season is different. So, start small. Start small. You say, you want to start a, uh, okay, our own is excellent in leadership conference. Say, your own is excellence in customer service conference, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> how do I get people to attend? Rent a small space. She rented a place that could take 70 people and then informed people. And uh, that day, I think, my estimation was about, about 120 or so showed up because the place was packed out and people were standing outside and standing right up to, on the steps to the ground floor. That's it. That would be encouraging to you. The place was packed out. If they ask you, how did it go? It was a breakthrough, total breakthrough. The place was packed out. People couldn't even find where to start. You don't need to tell anybody any figure. The place was packed. People couldn't even come in. Attitude is very critical in this matter. Very critical. So I was watching this video you know, during the week of, a, of, a, of an eagle, a golden eagle, and it was an experiment in the studio. Somebody held the eagle, then at the opposite end, they had a fan that blew air. So at the, at the highest point, the fan was blowing air at 20 miles per hour. They wanted to see how the eagle would respond to the wind. The eagle just spread its wings like that tilted it at some angle, stretched the feathers. So they focused the camera, you know, on those wings, focused the camera on its tail. That's the way it spread its tail and was literally floating on that wind. The person holding the eagle said, I can't even feel the weight of the eagle anymore. See, the eagle has been designed to handle the wind. You've been designed to handle the storms that are coming your way. And for you, it may not be wings or tail. For you, it is attitude. For you, it's your thoughts. It's your emotions. And there's a place you will position yourself, the storm will knock you down. But there's a place you will position yourself internally, in your mind, and the very storm that is running up other people down is what you will use to fly, to fly or to swap. Yeah? Adversity comes for a purpose. First, 
I believe that challenges come to separate people that are serious about their dreams from the ones that are not serious about their dreams or their aspirations. Some people don't realize that. When the challenges come, they want to separate the people who have strong desires from those that have mere wishes. Okay? Secondly, um, somebody said, in the face of adversity, some develop wings, others go for crutches. Lots of people use their challenges as excuse for their failure. Say, it's not me. It's because of the problem I had. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, there is no temptation that has come to you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to bear. He will, with the temptation, also make a way of escape. In other words, storms are custom made. Yours is different from mine. But God will never allow you to experience a storm that is too much for you. He said, hmm, you've been designed, wired. The thing that will overcome the storm is inside you already. Listen, the best of a human being does not come out until you're in trouble. Mm. We are like tea bags. You put tea bag in cold water, you get nothing. It's when you put the tea bag in hot water. That's when the anointing, the juice, <laughs> the value of the tea will come out. I say that the fastest human beings will not be discovered at the Olympics. I don't think so. If you have the opportunity of holding a stopwatch, when someone comes face to face with a lion in the forest, you will find the fastest man in the world. I'm telling you. Woo! When you find yourself in hot water, in challenges you never thought you would, your genius will come out. It's, it's the challenges that bring the best out of us. Did I hear you say amen? amen? This storm didn't come to run you down. It came to get the best out of you. Don't let adversity bury your dreams. James chapter 1 verse 2, the first time I read it as a young Christian, I was surprised. I thought they made a mistake writing that verse in the Bible. Brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, trials and temptations, I say, ah, <laughs> I should be counting it joy that I have trouble. <laughs> it says, knowing this, that the trial of your faith works patience. That's it. It's a matter of perspective. It's how you see it. Okay? It's how you see it. It's attitude. When I say these days, I can never be poor again the rest of my life. You know, for some people, it doesn't make much difference. It's, of course, except if you mismanage the opportunities that God has given you now. Why should you be poor again the rest of your life? I think that's what some people will be thinking. But I began to make that statement as a jobless graduate. Finish your service. Almost two years, couldn't get a job. And fought mental battles. But through prayer, after God spoke to me, showed me my future clearly, and I could tell people boldly, I could, I could despise the situation, defy the circumstances. I can never be poor again the rest of my life. I was telling people, I'm not a local champion. I'm not a local. I wasn't living in Lagos then. I was in the backside of the desert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I said, you know, I'm going to the world. I'm not a local champion. I'm going to the world. James chapter 1, verses 2 and 3 in the Message Bible. It says, consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. I like that. He that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Let me round up by saying this. You must never assume that because some people are super achievers because life is easier on them. Never make that assumption. It will be a wrong assumption. Never assume that it's because things are easier for others. That's why they are succeeding as much as they are succeeding. You will be amazed when they tell you their stories. 
One Yoruba adage says, the bigger the head, the bigger the headache. Some people don't realize the reason why God will not give you bigger challenges along with the bigger blessings and opportunities that come with them is because the small ones have almost killed you. <laughs> God is doing you a favor by not promoting you because of what you have shown, your antecedents with small challenges. <laughs> never assume that it is because things are easier for people, that's why they are succeeding the way they are succeeding. Never. It's not even one of my stories that you have heard. Because it's not my business to bore you with my challenges. Until, well, the stories have changed to breakthrough. Then they can be inspiring. Some years back, I arrived at... Uh, 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 an airport in Europe and the whole family had done Christmas there. We had just left some nine days or so before and I arrived for some, it was a business trip and like joke, it, it was like joke, you know, it was like <laughs> and then they were asking me questions and asking me questions, told me to wait brought someone who began to interview me, then brought somebody else who said I need to check through your things, check through my hand luggage, check through my bags you know, took me back, sit down, brought somebody else that checked all through again everything before they took me in, interviewed me, and then detained me at the airport for the whole day. And then canceled my visa and said they were sending me back to Nigeria. Oh, yeah. So the earliest flight I could find to Nigeria was going to Abuja. So I got on that flight. I, visa canceled, shipped back <laughs> to Nigeria. When I arrived in Abuja, as we were walking out of the aircraft, the head of the cabin crew, when I got there, said, Reverend, <laughs> you won't be able to walk out easily like that. Um, these two gentlemen, you have to go with them. They were officials of the Nigerian immigration. They had been informed that there was somebody on the plane that was their customer. So <laughs> <laughs> it's just that when the two gentlemen saw me, they said, Daddy, what happened? What happened, sir? <laughs> I said, let's go, let's go. I'll tell you this story. <laughs> I mean, absolutely unusual. Five-year visa council. Okay? So when I was wondering, it seemed like, like a crazy thing, like an unusual thing until I had just a few weeks later, you know, this powerful minister of the gospel, if I mention his name, everybody here would know him, flew in private jet into the same country and they told him to go back like a joke, and he had a conference starting that day. He had to record a message by video inside the aircraft that they went to play, quickly arrange people that would do the preaching because they told him to fly back to his country. Okay, you won't hear that, right? So everything seems smooth. And you don't realize it is because of that capacity to master storms, that capacity to dive into the storm and use it. You don't even realize it is the storm that we're riding on like that. You can't, can you see the storm? You can't see the wind now. You, you only see the eagle. Ah, say, I want to fly like the eagle. Come and suffer like the eagle. <laughs> Some friends and I went to Prayer City, uh, the Kingsway International Christian Center, when they had just bought their new property. Massive, beautiful thing. So as we walked by with Pastor Matthew, Ashimolo, ah, <laughs> so one of us said, Lord, do my own. <laughs> Pastor Matthew said, be careful how you say that prayer. <laughs> because he said, before, before you covet my blessing, <laughs> be sure you are not coveting my trouble. <laughs> Listen, whatever it is that is running other people down, this year, heaven will cause you to ride over it. <laughs> and the thing that is knocking people down is what God will use to push you up this year. <laughs> the one that got troubled but did not understand its purpose, I prophesy by the power of the Spirit of God that in the name of Jesus Christ, 
as you see God walking in your life, and you choose to obey him whether it is convenient or not, whatever was a challenge before this service, I declare it has become your stepping stone. Yeah. What was meant to be your season of trouble has become your season of promotion. Yeah. What was impossible before this service has become possible now. Yeah. If Satan stole anything from you, I declare your season of restoration is here. Yeah. That thing that has been so rough about your life that people have been talking about, some have criticized you, some have insulted you over it. I declare by the power of the Spirit of God, they saw you down, they will see you sorry. Yeah. The days of slander, the days of mockery, the days of shame, those days are over. Yeah. The days of celebration are here. Yeah. I prophesy the heavens are open over you. Yeah. Receive wisdom like you never did before. Receive visions like you never did before. Receive dreams like you never did before. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, your season of promotion is here. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Would you like to share your thoughts with us on this series? Connect with us now on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook using hashtag SoarLikeEagles. Tell us how this series is changing lives now online with hashtag SoarLikeEagles. Thank you.